Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. Wherever you're watching from, it's all in media group sports section. And um, I'm going to now give you a personal overview on the NFL. So why do I watch the NFL? And I'm going to touch probably a few other sports as well, but it's, the focus will be the NFL. I hope you've watched or going to watch my um, NFL, NFL overview and uh, why the NFL. And now um, I'm going to give you a personal overview on uh, on the NFL. Now the NFL, like I say, um, I've explained in my other video, is a is a game of strategy. And if you are someone that likes sports as a whole and you appreciate sports like I do, because I appreciate sportsmen, uh, one key thing by um, by a letter of my own law, I'm not going to call any sportsman crap. Excuse my language. I'm not going to um, disrespect or degrade any sport. Because to be a sportsman takes dedication, takes consistency, and it takes a lot of confidence to be a sportsman or sportswoman. So you're not going to find me frowning on any sport, hence why I love American football. And then the reason why I say I love it is because I like the strategy. I'm a strategist. I like to strategize. I like to have um, an insight on the next 10 steps. You understand me? I don't go into anything blindly. Um, so that's my, so because it's a personal overview, I'm going to come from a personal standpoint. So if anyone disagrees or offend anyone, I do apologize, but it's a personal standpoint. Um, but if anyone disagrees, please comment, you know, um, this is what this is about. It's about reaching out to you guys and giving you guys a platform to have your own opinions and whatnot. So I'll welcome it. But, um, American football is a game of strategy and I've explained the rules and everything. And the one key thing I like about, um, American football is the structure. Everything from... The way the rules are um, determined to the teams, the team structure, the way you go from, you can start from what we could call the bottom level, or amateur American football, amateur leagues. Then you can go into the college university leagues, which I've explained to the NCAA, and then you can end up in the NFL. And um, the whole structure is that there are other, um, I don't want to call them minor, but there are other um, American football territories, i.e. there's one in Canada. But the main one is the NFL. I mean, they those other territories do aim to get into the NFL. I mean, you have the XFL, which I believe is coming back into play. That is a uh, um, that's basically American football run by um, the WWE, the World Wrestling Entertainment, um, and Vince McMahon apparently spearheading the XFL XFL's return. Which I'm sure if he does, I will do a piece on that. But you have other te American football territories, which is the point I'm trying to wrap up here. So, but the NFL being the key one, um, I've watched it. I've been watching it personally. I've been watching it since 2004, 2005. And um, from a personal view, it's like, you know, this is around the time, uh, um, late 90s, early 2Ks. This is around the time Liverpool Football Club, my soccer team, as Americans would know it, or my football team. Then they went out of business. And I was looking at the, the um, and, this is the, and this is relevant to the American football. And uh, let me get to the point. This is around the time that they nearly, nearly went into financial um, ruin. They, you know, they nearly went bust. They nearly went out of business. And being so close to being out of business, I looked at my beloved Liverpool, and I was proud to say that. And um, they were a club that were a family-run club. I don't know if anybody knows the Moore family, and if anyone knows about Littlewood Pools, put it up on Wikipedia. Put it up the Littlewood Pools history. The Moore family are basically, I think they run it, or they were one of the chairmen in it. And the Moore family were basically running Liverpool Football Club and they had to set up. They sold up to, I'm not going to mention any names, but two American blokes. And I've got nothing against Americans, by the way, but two American blokes that basically run the, they tried to use Liverpool Football Club, historic club like Liverpool, like a credit card. And then they went out of business. And then they went bust. So, um, and at this time, because it was poorly run by them, Liverpool just went into disarray. Right, so this is around, um, actually, sorry, this is not 2004. This is after Liverpool win the Champions League in 2005. So around this time, I started watching American football because I started seeing how talented these guys are. Everyone from the quarterback who can lobby, and I, I fell in love with the sport. I saw a quarterback and um, old main drop. I saw Tom Brady do it. Um... Then I saw Peyton Manning do it. He was playing for the Indianapolis Colts. And they're the first team um, I actually follow. And I still follow them up to this day. And I saw Eli Manning at um, New York Giants throw this ball. Again, accurately, a clear 60, 70 yards downfield. And I'm watching this thinking. So I, I at back then, I pulled up some um, videos on the internet. YouTube was still 
was growing back then, but I watched it on the internet anyway. And I'm seeing these guys throw a ball 60, 70 yards, clear down the field, accurately hitting a wide receiver. I was thinking, gosh, this is amazing. Then I go on to see a guy kick a ball 50 yards to goal. And I'm thinking, wow, I mean, it takes a lot of strength. Then I'm seeing defensive guys, big 16, 18 stone guys, leg it after a guy. I'm like, in other words, I was fascinated by the sport. Now, the reason why I mentioned Liverpool and the money and American football and the money, I, I'm not someone that's going to follow something unless I know what the core of it is, what it's about, what's the goal, why are we watching this, why are we a part of this, why are we doing this, etc., etc. So I read, read into the rules of American football about the yards, about the 10 yards and about the downs, first and 10, second and 30 and blah, 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 whatever. And to understand the structure, what is the goal of, how do you win a game in American football? Obviously, it's getting more points. How do you get more points? I mean, well, I mean six points for a touchdown, one for a field goal or a two-point conversion after the field goal. Uh, sorry, two-point conversion after the touchdown gets you eight points instead of seven. I'm trying to figure out, all that confused me, it's probably confusing you right now, but let me repeat that. Six points for a touchdown, if you do a two point conversion, then it's two more points added to that, that's eight. Or you could get six points for a touchdown and kick a field goal, and that field goal will get you an extra point, I mean you've got seven points. Bearing in mind, if you don't score a touchdown, but you score a field goal, you're looking at three points. And it's one of the first plays I saw, was the 60-yard throw, accurate throw, down the field. Guy catches it like it's nothing. It's like snatching out the air. And I'm not exaggerating. The ball came over his shoulder. He's just looked up and gone ping, and he's running and caught the I'm like, wow, he scored a touchdown. Then the next play I've seen is, um, if I remember rightly, the defense now get a fumble. I explained in the last video what a fumble is, but basically... Um, in the in the motion of play, so once the play is now ongoing, um, you so uh, the scenario is the uh, the offensive um, player had the ball and he was running with it, right? Now the play is still active because his knees didn't hit the floor. The defense came up to him and basically went into him, full force. Something he's dead. He's got to die. Come on, you can't hit someone that hard and ain't dead. Bearing in mind, this guy's built as well, so he took it. But the ball dropped. His knees didn't touch the floor. His bum didn't touch the floor. He just saw the players still active. He took the ball, and which is what they call a fumble, and it's an overturning play. So he took the ball, and the defenders took the ball, swerved past two players that have come running at him. Next player's coming this way. He's ducked under, and he's gone. And he's gone a clear 30 yards, and then it's been stopped. I looked at that and thought, Okay, I like this ball. I like it. So I had to understand the rules about why that's a fumble. Because again, his knees didn't hit the floor. So the play was still in motion. One key thing I realised as well is referees. Why is there so many referees? I mean, you've got the referee on the field. You've got one in. So line of scrimmage is um same term used in rugby. Line of scrimmage. The defensive line was there. And then you've got the defensive line. And then there's a referee behind the defensive line, there's a referee behind the offensive line, and there's two on each side. I'm like, there's all these referees. One key thing I wrote notice, and this is why I love the sport as well, is because the referee stops play for a foul. And this is where a lot of people get confused because this is why they say stop start. Is they're so accurate to detail where fouls are foul, they have to explain why they stop the play. What they stopped it for and the conclusion of the play. So you'll hear um, an example would be pass interference. Defense, number 44, five-yard penalty, right? So what that means, basically, he's on the defender, number 44. He committed pass interference on the offensive player. So pass interference would basically be, so the ball, let's say the ball is coming in, it's been thrown to me. Pass interference. Now, it's very, very, um, a very, very accurate rule here. So, um, um, I'm, I'm going by the book here. So, pass interference on me would basically be, the ball's coming towards me. He has basically interfered with me unfairly before the ball is within, is within my area. 
So the ball's coming over. If the ball has just been thrown and he grabs me, throws into the floor, that's a foul. I mean, the ball's nowhere near me. Why are you touching me? It could be going to the guy behind me. What are you touching me for? Or he grabs my helmet, which is his face, um, um, which is a face foul. I forgot the term, it's a face foul. Helmet. If he grabs my helmet. Or if he interferes in me trying to get that ball unfairly, then it's pass interference. What he can do, he can bump me or he, he can't grab me. But he can, like, push me a bit. Like, you know what I mean? That's fair. The ball's coming in now. He can, you know what I mean? Because he needs to get that ball. He can intercept it. But what he cannot do is hold my hands down. Or he can't hold me down like they do in the Premier League. It happens. That's why VAR was brought in. And that's another debate for another time. He can't hold me down. He can't grab me. You know what I mean? Like, like because the, another term will be holding defence number 44. That means he's gripped me. And he's, you know what I mean? He's held me in. He can push me. He can, like, kind of... Quick grab, like, no, not move, you know what I mean? But it's so, it is contact sport. But what it is, is pass interference because he's interfered with me getting this ball unfairly. This ball's coming in, he can interfere it. He can budge me out of the way. You understand me? He can grab me once I've got the ball and then tap it out my hand. But what he cannot do is grab me before the ball gets in. So I need a fair chance to get that ball. Same way I need to give him a fair chance to get the ball because I can't grab him or hold him down or put my hand in his helmet or block him because that's pass interference on offense. So I hope that um, that explains what pass interference is at the same time as explaining to you what foul is at the same time explaining that. Now the referee stops play. He remember he just said pass interference, defense, number 44, five yard penalty. So right now he said to everyone that that's the play, that's what's happening. Now every play is replayed in the background. We might not see the replay and the play's not going to be stopped for the replay, but it's already been replayed so they can confirm that. You understand me? Now, let me now explain to you what the five yards is. And in my other video, I explained to you about the yardage. You know what I mean? First in 10. So, for instance, I've got to make 10 yards to get 10 yards closer to his goal. It's first in 10 is my first attempt at this. When we get to the eighth, um, when we get to the eighth, uh, sorry, when we get to the second down now, right? So, let's say I've only made eight yards. So, it will be now second and two so it's the second chance um and i've got two yards to go so it's the second yards to make the to complete 10 yards and it's my second chance at it and i've got two yards to go instead of saying all of that they say second and two so it's my second chance to make two so now let's imagine now right this foul's taking place now um 10 yard uh, it's five, it's five yard penalty so basically they will forward me five yards. Fresh set of downs. Automatic first down. Sorry. So in this term, he would say pass interference, defense, number 44, five yard penalty, automatic first down. That means, yeah, right. The difference here is, and I know a lot of people say common sense, but I'm still going to explain it because a lot of people are trying to understand American football. But what he will say is um, automatic first downs because I only had two yards to go to complete you know, to get a fresh set of downs. So it's automatic. So you go four or five yards closer to their goal. So it's a fresh set of downs. So now it's first and 10 again. Now, let's say, um, you could say 10 yard penalty as well, which is, I think, passing to families is usually automatically a 10 yard penalty. But it depends on the phase of play. And again, um, again, I'm gonna. This is my second. Um, this is my. Uh, sorry, this is my first NFL video. I've got a second one that's gonna be uploaded with this one, and I'm gonna do a third video about more in depth about the rules. But when I saw stuff like this, is um, is when I said this is the game I want to get into because the rules sound complex, guys. But once you get used to the rules, believe me. You'll look at it and think, yeah, I could see, especially if you're into strategy, especially if you're um, a chess player or you like organisation or you like more hands-on sport. Um, it's very, it's some people call the uh, American football the cousin of rugby. Rugby was a sport created first over the uh, over here in the UK. and um, But uh, some people say American football is a variation of rugby. I agree to disagree. It's a sports on its own, but there are very similar entities to rugby. Um, but the key thing I will say is that it's a sport, If especially if you like rugby, it's worth getting into. If you like football, worth getting into. It's another sport. It's a great sport. It's well organised. And um, to go back to an earlier point I was making about um, 
Liverpool and why it made me start to look at other sports is because I was like, I can't be so close-minded that if, if it's my team's in trouble, I stop supporting them. No, but I can't be close-minded that my team's in trouble or I get turned off football. I, I, sh I should love my team regardless. So I still follow Liverpool and I still follow them. But what I started doing is watching sports like darts and um, started watching La Liga football in, in, in Spain and I still watch it up to this day. Um, but another thing um, I started watching is American football because I started like it was about 2003, 2004. And funny enough, the one of the, my biggest recommendations in this video is definitely start watching American football in the playoffs because that's when I started watching it. I started watching about the playoffs. And in my last video, and I'll explain it again here, the playoffs is the equivalent to um, the quarterfinals. Or the last 16, I should say, sorry. So... Understanding the NFC, the AFC, they are conferences. And then once you've got the conferences, um, there are 16 teams in each conference. They battle it out in four divisions. From the four divisions, you would have the four teams come forward. And then um, wildcard teams will join them. That would be the equivalent to the last 32. But then the top seeds automatically go to the quarterfinals. Yeah. And then um, what happens in the last 32? No, so last 16 sorry what you could call the last 16 is that um so if you look at that you've got the last 16 would be the four winners right yeah so that's eight then you'll have the the next so the four winners are the top seeds and then you have the second seeds and then so that's two four six eight and then you have wild cards the wild cards are like the best, um, the next best um, teams. Usually the teams finishing third in the divisions with the best records. So you have that on the inside. They'll go into the last. If I'm getting my maths right, I hope I'm not getting this. Um, I'm getting this wrong. I love this sport. I've studied this. Yes, I have. But yeah, so the last um, 16 on each side. Then you get to the last eight, which is the quarterfinals. This is where the top seeded teams from the divisions come into action and they play the wild cards and they play the the, the next seeded teams. And then you've got the court that's sorry, then you've got the semi-finals, which is now the conference playoff, which is the conference championship. So it's the two best teams in the conferences that have made it through the division games, they've made it through the last 16 and the wild cards, and then now they're in a conference championship. That's 2-2. Two, two. Whoever wins this 1-1 one, one comes into the Super Bowl. Sunday, 2nd of February 2020, Super Bowl 54. That's just happened. That's when I watched, not, not this year, but this is going way back in 2002, 2003. Um, I started watching it in, I believe I watched the quarterfinals. So it's the playoffs. Again, playoffs. Or what's the quarterfinals? Quarterfinal playoffs. And um, I was fascinated. So and one key thing I, I, I highly recommend to anybody to watch it then is because in the wild card playoffs, in the wild card playoffs, sorry, and in the main playoffs like the quarterfinals, the commentators do a lot of explaining about the rules and why the rules are that way. And what you get as well, and Sky, I've got to give big up Sky on this one. Sky usually do programs also, the lead up to the playoff game. They will do probably 15, 20 minutes of rule explanation as well. They'll definitely do this for the conference playoffs and they'll definitely do it for the Super Bowl. And they get ex-players, ex-experts as well, ex-players, ex-owners of the of franchises, um, they'll explain the rules and explain how the game goes. So anybody watching, I mean, it's late. I wish I would have done this video earlier. I should have. But um, I highly recommend you watch the Super Bowl. I wish I'd done this video three weeks ago and, and, and people would take my advice and go and watch the playoffs so you can understand. Because that's the best time to watch it. You get the rules. You get the high action. Each team that they're optimum best. Because they've best played um, in, uh, in, in, the, in their main season. In their divisions. And they've now come to the playoff season. And um, what it is. The good thing about the play se uh, playoff season. Is between games. Their games are usually on a Saturday, Sunday. Thursday, sorry. Thursday, Thursday, Sunday and Monday. They get bigger gaps between games. So they got more rest. You know what I mean? Don't mean they're not training anymore, but they get more rest. So when they get to the playoffs, they're most likely to be the optimum best. Time they get to the conference championship, the conference championship, a must-watch game before the Super Bowl. If you watch the Super Bowl, you'll see it as a spectacle. You'll see the halftime show, and you'll see two teams just 
playing at their best and the problem what people will call it boring is because you'll even get two chess playing teams that are literally like right we're gonna go step by step in this our goal is to win yes but we are going to be very we're gonna pace ourselves through this game and usually you do get two teams like that but what you will get as well is you get two action packed teams that's gonna go for it they're like this is not chess we're just gonna go we're gonna get a touchdown a field goal our defense and special teams are gonna come out and 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 Create havoc, and we're gonna go again. Yeah, and action packed. Either way, it was action packed. So that's what you'll see in the Super Bowl. But if you watch the Conference Championship and the Super Bowl, you'll be like, "Yeah, I love this game." And that's what I was privileged to do. I watched, like I said, I watched the quarterfinal playoffs. Then I watched the Conference Championship. Then I saw the Super Bowl, and I was hooked. And since then, I've tried to watch Super Bowls um, every season. Um, it's an amazing sport. I would go out and watch it. Definitely recommend this Sunday. BBC One and Sky are showing it. BBC One, well done. They started showing the Super Bowl, I think from two seasons ago, and it's worth watching. So you, if you're not a Sky viewer or not got Virgin Media, um, then um, definitely can watch it on BBC. And they watch it, they play it in HD as well. So, you know, so just, that's my personal overview on why I love the game and what got me watching it. And... Um, Again, I still follow Liverpool, and um, I now when uh, so just so to get a bit personalised now is a personal overview after all. But I started watching the Indianapolis Colts, and they had Peyton Manning, and a few other great players. And um, I also watched the Philadelphia Eagles, um, the New England Patriots, and um, I kind of like Green Bay Packers as well. So I was watching these teams. These teams I just mentioned. I mean, Indianapolis Colts have gone through transition period after transition transitional period and i'm still following up to this day um andrew luck if you pull out he had to retire really young quarterback player really great player he had to retire early but i've been watching them they're my main team um but the other the, the teams i mentioned um um philadelphia eagles i love watching them as well really good team but obviously if you watch nfl you know about nfl the green bay packers and the new england patriots are basically consistent they're the most two of the most consistent teams along with the Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Steelers they're the consistently in the playoffs you know, they'll make the minimum playoffs and um Super Bowls and we've got the San Francisco for um 49ers um they're also consistent as well so you've got some consistent teams that always make the playoffs but what I'm trying to say here the point let me get to my point now I'm not glory hunter I'm not just going watching the New England Patriots because they're Super Bowl winners left right and center no I watched them because again I was hooked by watching um Tom Brady lob a ball 60 yards like it was nothing I was like wow like Drew Brees I saw as well no, New Orleans Saints. I was like, wow, this guy is amazing. And then if you look at, if you want to look at the statistics, if you go to NFL.com and you see statistics about what these, the numbers these guys are throwing every season, then you'll see, yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyone that knows me personally will see, I see why he would like something like this. Because I like numbers and statistics. I like, I like, I like, you know what I mean? I like to strategize. So, um, yeah, so that's my personal view on the NFL. That's why I watch it. I recommend you watch it. And um, the structure, another thing, let me just throw this one in there before I go, because I'm 23 minutes now. One thing I will throw in there as well is that they've got a salary cap. And um, just to let you know, one of the unfair advantages in the Premier League in uh, in the UK, and one of the unfair advantages in football period, is that there's a lot of lower league teams going out of business. A lot of league, lower, teams, um, lower league teams suffering because um, of finance. And um, one key thing, anybody that knows football... Um, what you'll notice is that if you know your history of football, you know it. I'm, I'm, and then I'm on this channel. I've got about Liverpool, Man United, and I've mentioned Chelsea, Arsenal, all these different teams. But one key thing that's happened over the past twenty years is that the league was dominated by Liverpool. Then Man United took over. Then Arsenal had the little run, and then basically, obviously, Man United had unfair monopoly. And I'm not. I'm going to say it here. It's a personal overview. So I'm going to say it. It was thirty time. It was control over referees and unfair finance. They were buying players left, right, and centre. Thirty million, twenty five billion here. And at that point, if anyone remembers, in the nineties, the biggest record transfer then was fifteen million. Man United took that up to 26, 30, 32 million, and just over forty million all within the space of five, six years. And um, as everyone knows, that what broke the strangle, stranglehold is when Chelsea Football Club were bought out by an uh, oil tycoon. And then what made it even worse, uh, Manchester City were bought by an oil tycoon. And um, they were able to spend billions buying the club. 
hundreds of millions buying a club and then up to this point, an example, as of last week, Manchester United in the past six, seven years has spent 1.1 billion on trade player transfers. And let me get to the point of the reason why I'm mentioning this. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because in the NFL that will not happen. That's one key thing that made me get keyed into the NFL. It's because I'm seeing my boyhood club, the club I love from since I was four. Um, by the way, I've gone abroad, I've lived abroad for a few years and I've come back and loved that same team and all my childhood friends uh, who were Liverpool fans and now Arsenal fans and Man United fans think the 90s what was happening there and then in the 2Ks they're Chelsea fans I'm like, no man, I've left the country and come back and I still love Liverpool but the reason why this is relevant is because while Liverpool are going through financial turmoil and why you got clubs spending billions like it's nothing and you got clubs going out of business. And you've got players, players that want to go to one club, but they go to another club because they're paying a bigger wage and paying more money for them. Is because um, is because in the NFL, you don't have that. They have what they call the salary cap. The salary cap is a wonderful thing. The best way to sum it up, right, is this, is exactly what it is. You pay your players' salaries, right? Now, you can't have, you've got 11 players on the team, right, and your defence, 11 players in your offence, and then you've got, um, you've got your special teams and then, you know, you've got other players in and around the squad. Now, you basically have to keep, you pay them their wages, but you're, you, you're capped every season and you can't go above that. So what that effectively does is to give you an example in football terms is you couldn't have Ronaldo, Messi, um, Sergio Aguero, um, let's say, um, Pab um, D Dybala, um, uh, let's just throw someone else in there. Um, Salah, Mohamed Salah. You can't have all these plays. Why? What have all those plays got in common? Gareth Bell at Real Madrid. Um, Sergio Ramos at Real Madrid. Um, you can't have all of them in the same squad because their salaries are high. Your wage bill paying salaries will be astronomical. It will be too high. So what? And then what? That unfair. And what's the unfair advantage there? And one team got all those great plays. It's not fair. You you clear house every season. What's the use of even trying? So the salary cap is basically um, a part of a structure in the NFL where you you can't spend beyond your means. So you can only spend what you've earned in revenue. Now your revenue obviously is your stadium revenues. Their their stadiums are cities anyway. I mean I think the lowest attendance. Uh, the average attendance is 70,000 a week. Yeah. No, 40, 50,000 a week. Every week. And um, their revenue is coming from, yeah, shirt sales and um, TV deals, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But even their TV deals are sorted out differently. But effectively, what it means at the end of every um, court and a financial quarter, they can only spend what they've earned, what they've accumulated accumulated and then what the salary cap does is it caps how many players they can first of all buy in and pay and what they can pay their players now they also got a rookie system where they have to have a certain amount of rookies on their squad so what they have to do they have to balance the team has to be balanced with rookies people they've brought through the academies yeah, so that's an academy they've brought in through their own academy. Then they need to get um, and that is a mixture. Sorry, that's a mixture of people they've got their own academy and who they've got from the NCAA, who they've drafted in from other squads, rookies. Then it has to be balanced with their yeah their own yeah they go and got superstar player, but the squad is balanced basically. It's not just superstar players. They need to get a mixture of homegrown. Um, homegrown from town, homegrown from rookies from in and around the NFL, and you know, then they get the squad of plays that they choose from. So, the organization there alone got me fascinated. Like, wow, this this could work in football, and it should work in football. You know, so um, so personally, that's why I love the NFL because I'm watching my team in financial disarray, other teams spending money like um um like you know. Like it's going out of fashion. Then I'm seeing the NFL control it better. So you can't have too many um, great players in your squad. you got to train them up. Their contracts have to be fair. They have to be paid fair. When you pay these players, the salary caps also, it, it's not stuck. It does fluctuate. Every season it goes up and down. So depending on how well you finished last season, how much money you brought in, how many players in your squad that you've got that have been there for three, four years and they're building a franchise. 
You understand me? And that's another term as well. Some of these are franchises and they get franchise privileges. You understand me? But to be a franchise, they've got to make certain criteria. And this is something the, the Premier League and the FA really have to look at. FIFA needs to look at that. Because if you really look at it, um, and, now, and this is personal overview on the NFL, but it's also personal overview on sports, is that if anybody remembers the Italian League in the 90s, there was a boom. And this boom was financial because all their top teams were either winning the Champions League, which is the Europeans' top competition, so the best of the best played in there. And then um, what happened, they had um, three or four teams in there. Basically what Sp the Spanish and the English League has now, the Ita Italians had that in the, in the 90s. So much money was plowed into their game, but the bubble popped. It, most of those clubs nearly went bust, so they had to draw back. Now, what's happened in the Spanish league lately is that Real Madrid and uh, Barcelona are over there. They had an unfair advantage of TV rights. And um, the unfair advantage of TV rights was basically that Barcelona and Real Madrid would divvy up the TV rights for the season. And then whatever scraps are left, the other teams can share it. So it was an 80-20 split. If you look at it, there was literally 80, 70, at one point it was 76% of the TV revenue was going towards Barcelona and Madrid. Anyway, look, well, it's Spanish FA said we're not having any of this. It has to be split evenly. You can negotiate your own personal personalized TV deals of your own, but at the end of the day, the money has to be spread more evenly. So it's not 76 to 8 percent cut anymore. You understand me? It's it's shrunk, not dramatically, but it's shrunk enough that the other teams can now get a, a bigger piece of the pie, meaning they don't have to sell their best players, and meaning more revenues come to them clubs and they're stabilizing. Now the NFL done this way back in the 60s and 70s where they started to look at the clubs and the franchises and they started to realise, right, let's make sure no one can get an unfair advantage by buying all the best players. I believe in the NBA, they also have this. They've got a system where you need to have a rookie in your squad. You should have a rookie, homegrown player. You know what I mean? You need to look at your college. But the thing is, this is the key thing about the NFL. The NFL and the NBA, they thrive on their college and university leagues. They thrive on bringing players from them leagues there. But the key thing is because there's... There's rookie leagues. Now, I call them rookie leagues because so they're younger players. They're college and universities. They've got their leagues. So some of them players in them leagues, they don't have to go to the NBA or the NFL. But the problem in the UK and Europe is that only certain clubs have a youth system where they, they go into the youth system and bring them up. Meaning there's a lot of youth that go on the youth talent pool that they go untouched. But in the NFL and the NBA, it's not allowed. And the NFL... They emphasise you have to have a certain amount of rookies in your squad and you have to give them game time. If you're not, you have to let another franchise get them. And this is so personally why I love the NFL because it's the structure as a whole that basically runs like a fine oil, a well oiled, a real oiled machine, a well oiled machine. So, so there's many different reasons why I like the NFL and I love it. And as a sport, I recommend people get into. Because we can't be, come on guys, we can't be close-minded. We've got to, I love football, don't get me wrong. But we've got to look beyond football. You've got to look at tennis. You've got to look, I, I love darts. You've got to look at rugby. You've got to look at, you know what I mean? You've got to look at cricket. C come on, because at the end of the day, these are sportsmen and women that are committed to um, profiling their, their gifts and their talents and entertaining us. With that said, let me wrap up. It's 33 minutes. Thank you for watching. If you watched all the way to the end, again, comment, like, comment, subscribe, notification bell. So you can keep up to date when I upload videos. Um, this is um, me signing out and wherever you are calling from. Um, well, calling from, sorry. Wherever you're watching from. I hope you have a good day. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Wherever you are. Peace out.